Hello everyone, I'm Andy from Luminal Entertainment Technologies. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Zoom ISO with QLab so that you can create queue lists to be able to pull in individual participants from a Zoom call right into your QLab file. And I'll show you how to do that using the Siphon protocol on Mac OS and we'll show you some OSC commands that you can use to remote control Zoom ISO as well. This is going to be great when you have linear requirements to be able to go through a show file and grab video feeds on the fly and project them out. Uh, this will be really helpful for um, both uh, playback purposes as well as for performative purposes. So let's jump in and we'll take a look at how to do it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is inside of Zoom ISO, I'm going to select one output. I'm going to verify that the resolution and the display outputs by default are what I like, and that's correct. I'm going to go down to the drop down list and I'm going to go ahead and select Alex to start with. And if we go to show all windows, we'll see that we have a floating video of Alex. That's what we're looking for there. And the next thing I'm going to do is launch QLab. And with QLab open, I am going to go to QLab start demo mode. And I'm going to start demo now so I have access to all the features. I'm going to create a new workspace. And the first thing I need to do is I need to patch my siphon output to my camera input inside of QLab. I'm going to do that by going to the cog wheel in the bottom right and then going over to video. And then where it says camera patch one, I'm going to select zoom ISO one. And that'll be the siphon output coming from zoom ISO coming into QLab. I'm also going to delete all my existing projection surfaces. I'm going to add one more new one with a display with my secondary monitor. I'll turn on the grid for a second to make sure I have the right display there, and I do. So it looks good. And I'm just going to rename this to monitor. I'm going to close that, and I'm going to close that, hit done. So now I'm ready to make a queue. So I'm going to add a camera queue. I'll name it Alex. And under display and geometry, I'm going to select my camera, zoom ISO 1, and then my video surface monitor. So now when I play this queue, we get Alex on full screen on the secondary display, which is good. That's what we're looking for. So the I'm going to go ahead and escape and leave that queue. And let's say we wanted to fade that in. So what I would do there is I would make a, a group queue. I would drag the Alex queue into the group queue. And then I would add a fade queue in front of it. I would go to Alex's video and I'd set that to opacity zero. And then I would go to my fade queue. I'd have it target queue number one. And then I would have it go to geometry and set the opacity to 100%. And it'll do that, I think, by default over three seconds. I'll go ahead and set that to two seconds. Finally, I'll set my group queues mode to start all children simultaneously. And I'll call this queue fade in Alex. So now when I run this on the secondary display over two seconds, we have Alex fade in. That's good. So now let's say I wanted to change this video. I wanted to cut to somebody else. So the way that we would do that inside of QLab is with an OSC command. Zoom ISO supports an OSC command that allows you to route different participants in the Zoom meeting to its outputs. And so we're going to take use of that here. So what we'll do is we'll go over to the settings wheel again, and we'll go over to our network area. And now we're going to add Zoom ISO as an OSC destination. We're going to leave the address and the network alone. For now, it's all running on localhost. So we'll leave localhost as the destination. And for Zoom ISO, the default port is 9090. You can verify that by going to Zoom ISO Show all windows, select the settings pane, and go down to OSC settings. In that area, you can see that the receive port is defaulting to 9090. So you can type 9090 in there and hit done. Next, you're going to go over to the network queue, which is these concentric rings in the center of the list. So I'm going to add a network queue. And then I'm going to go over to settings. I'm going to set the destination as zoom ISO. And then I'm going to type in a command. The command we're going to use to control zoom ISO is slash zoom slash username slash output ISO, all caps on that. And then we need to put the name of somebody we want to cut to. So I'm going to pick somebody from my list. In my case, let me go ahead and escape the queue here. And let me grab Ken. So I'm going to copy Ken's name from my secondary list here. I'm going to just paste it in. So I'm going to do single quote, then the name, and then another single quote. And then we have to select the number, which is going to be the display that we want to go to. So I'm going to do space, and I'm going to do a one. And so this is going to go under here, and I'm going to say name is going to be cut to Ken, like that. So now if I go back to my queue list, we play the fade in Alex queue, and then we play the cut to Ken queue, and now we're looking at Ken. So now we've created a sequence of events. Now it's not repeatable, because we've cut to Ken, we don't have, if I run the fade in Alex queue, it'll fade in Ken, because Ken is currently assigned to that output. I'm going to go to uh, the fade in Alex queue block, I'm going to add another OSC queue, and we'll do the same thing we just did. The first thing we'll do is we will create a network queue under the settings. We're going to do slash zoom 
slash username slash output ISO single quote Alex Lindsay space dash space Novato CA quote and then output one. So now we run this Q stack again, we have Alex faded on the secondary display and then we can cut to Ken again and then we can run the Q stack again and it'll bring us back to Alex. So we can, now we can cut between them and this Q stack is repeatable. That's the basics. We could bring in additional sources if we wanted to by uh, continuing to add OSC queues or continuing to add cameras. But the good thing to know is that when Zoom ISO and QLab are running on the same computer, they can talk to each other via Siphon. And then no matter where they're running, you can control them via OSC. So if QLab is running on a computer that's designed to control your entire show, and you need to have a command that is used to control Zoom ISO, well, you can send that output ISO command as we did here, and you can route that output if that's going out to an ATEM or some sort of playout device, then you would be able to control on the projector or something like that what uh, what user is being sent to that. And you would do that in just a queue list inside of QLab. So that's the basics of getting these apps to talk to each other. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at info at liminalet.com. And feel free to check out the other videos on our YouTube channel to learn more about Zoom ISO.